This new wireless video system from DJI is like a mini-me of their bigger transmission. It's smaller, lighter, and basically blows everything else out of the water. This is the new DJI SDR, and it's like a mini-me version of their standard transmission system, except that it's a lot lighter and a lot smaller, but it still has an insane amount of range at around three kilometers. For starters, it uses a wireless technology called SDR, which stands for Software Defined Radio, which basically means that you're able to operate the radio via software rather than being locked into a specific radio protocol. Since SDR is defined at the software level, you can essentially keep adjusting your functionality based on your standards and because they also support a much broader spectrum. DJI has actually been working on this for some time and that's because we all know it as their OcuSync system found in their Mavic drones that we all know have several miles of range. Most other wireless video systems, including Teradek, are usually based on a Wi-Fi system simply because it's cost effective. But the biggest issue is that if you ever want to eventually upgrade your system, you have to implement newer hardware to keep up with the newer standards like Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 or even now Wi-Fi 7. Take Teradek, for example, the Bolt 4K was announced like five years ago and supported 4K signals through a five gigahertz connection. And a lot of people, including me, eventually dumped their older 3000s and switched over to the new Bolt 4Ks, only for Teradek to recently start pushing the newer Bolt 6 to keep up with the newer Wi-Fi 6 standard. Since SDR can automatically modulate and frequency hop, it essentially avoids interference on its own. And come to find out that the older DJI transmission has been using SDR this entire time, which might explain why it's been one of the more reliable wireless systems that I've used. These new units are super small and lightweight, like I said, and they weigh only 145 grams. And for comparison, the bigger transmission weighs a little over 350 grams. You don't get the same performance technically as the transmission system, but take that with a grain of salt because you're still getting two to three kilometers of range. It has an MPF plate on the back, as well as two different USB-C ports on the side. One for power and another for data if you want to plug a receiver directly into a mobile device for better image quality. The transmitters also have Wi-Fi built in, which is kind of neat. So if a client or another department quickly needs their own monitor, they could easily just use a mobile device to see the camera feed wirelessly. You can connect up to two wireless devices at the same time and up to an unlimited amount of receivers, which... I think is really cool using broadcast mode. So if you're not familiar, DJI wireless systems offer two different modes, control mode and broadcast mode. Control mode is for when you're also running a gimbal remotely, but you can also use it to enable auto frequency hopping and it does a lot better with managing wireless interference. Broadcast mode lets you connect an unlimited amount of receivers, but at the expense of a slightly lower bit rate and slightly shorter range which is still two kilometers in case you were wondering. Most of the time I'm only using one or two monitors, so I'll always just run the SDR in control mode so I can max out the 20 megabit bit rate and utilize the increased range and anti-interference. Yeah, some exclusive behind the scenes of a whoa, 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 NDA. His NDA, his NDA. <laughs> I have noticed that DJI systems in general have a bit more latency when compared to other systems like Teradek, which is important to consider if you're wanting to pull focus. I've definitely done it before, but there's about an 80 millisecond delay when using the SDR receiver and around a 110 millisecond delay when using Wi-Fi. There is a low latency option in the receiver and from what I've been told, it helps more when you're in poor RF environments. Apparently with the SDR, 60 frames per second has the fastest transfer rate. So the low latency mode basically converts anything lower than 60 frames up to 60 frames, but that won't actually get you any faster than the maximum throughput, which is 80 milliseconds. The antenna are built in and non-removable. So it makes it super easy to store and just throw in your bag. But it also is probably my biggest concern since we all know how easy these are to just accidentally bump when you're in the thick of it. So in the event of this plastic antenna just snapping off, I don't like the idea of having to send in this entire unit just to replace this antenna. 
The SDR works great with mirrorless cameras like the FX3 because they're so small and lightweight. And I actually usually prefer using standalone batteries with the transmitter, so I don't have to rig up the entire camera and run it off a separate D-tab. The original DJI transmission was always a great option, but the transmitter was always just so huge relative to the camera. Another awesome feature is having direct camera control right through the HDMI cable, so if the camera, for whatever reason, is inaccessible or running remotely on a gimbal, you can still have full access over the menus when using your phone or your tablet. We just recently did some testing in an off-road environment where we hard-mounted an FX3 to my buddy's Bronco to see how well the SDR performs in a vehicle scenario. So we're out here today testing the new DJI SDR in sort of a car application. And a lot of people like using the FX3 for a lot of car-to-car -car stuff because obviously it's super small, it's super easy to mount and or put on a gimbal and kind of hang that off your car. So I figured this would be kind of a really neat use case for the SDR. On Sony cameras, you can actually enable this sort of virtual joystick. So this is technically the follow car and I have another receiver here hooked up right to my phone. So I can enable that virtual joystick and then have complete camera control which is amazing since I don't have to keep getting in and out of the car to just toggle recording or if I need to change my ISO a couple stops, I can have control everything right from my iPhone or my tablet. So it's kind of really noteworthy because if you've ever used any kind of wireless video system in this sort of application before, you'll know that it's super hit and miss whether or not you'll get a connection. And in the time that we've used it today, the new SDR, the connection has been flawless. Even the uh, transmission looks pretty solid. Yeah, we haven't had any bad on our I've mentioned it before, but I've always been blown away with how reliable DJI's wireless is out in the real world, and we never ran into any connection issues until we lost line of sight, which is obviously a big deal when you're kind of doing any vehicle work. The SDR obviously pairs really well with any of the newer R series gimbals since it mounts right to the bottom and powers via USB-C, so you can almost think of it as a souped-up Raveneye since these now have a much greater range with the added benefit of actually being able to control the gimbal over that same distance. Still, are you still editing your YouTube video? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working while I'm working. Yeah, he's even got his color wheels out. I do, it, I do it for the clout. Since the SDR also includes an SDI port, it also makes it a great option for larger camera builds like the Verano. You can use a D-Tap to NPF adapter or just get one of these neat USB-C PD to D-Tap cables and just skip the NPF plate altogether to keep things really small and tidy. This one is from Alvin Cables and it uses the 9 volt 2 amp PD protocol to send enough power to the transmitter. One thing to note is that the transmitter can't use both inputs simultaneously, so whichever port is used first will take priority, whereas on the receiver side, you can actually use all three outputs simultaneously, meaning the SDI, HDMI, and also the USB-C. Pricing is super competitive. You can expect $549 for the combo and about $309 for the transmitter or receiver if you're getting them separately. I'm honestly amazed because the price to performance is way above just anything else in its class. And you can obviously throw this receiver on just about any monitor you want, but I've been using this as a lightweight handheld monitor because you're able to use smartphones or tablets that you might already own, which also makes it budget friendly. This is a typical director's monitor that I've had for years. It's big, it's bulky, and it's probably been years since I've used it because it uses the older Teradek Bolt system. And then this is the exact same setup using only an iPad mini that I had laying around. It's about half this thin and every single person that I've given this to has commented on how crazy lightweight this setup is. And it kind of speaks volumes because we're all kind of used to lugging around this, which is super heavy once you attach a gold nut battery on the back. Another thing I want to mention is the dramatic cost difference between both of these setups. For the OG handhelds, you'll need a cage, a wireless system, a seven inch monitor to attach to the cage, a battery plate, and in total, you're looking around $4,600 out the door. 
You can alternatively get a small HD monitor with the wireless built in for a little bit cheaper at 4,500, but keep in mind that doesn't include a compatible transmitter. Or if you already have a small HD monitor, you can get a Teradek module and a separate transmitter for 3,500. So for the SDR option, you obviously need an SDR set, an iPad mini, a cage for the iPad, a cage for the iPad cage, and that's basically all you need. It's three and a half times less than the Teradek equivalent. You could also just use DJI's tablet or phone holder for 50 bucks, and you're practically spending nothing when compared to the other solutions. Another consideration is not only the cost for you, but also the cost for your client. It's a much easier sell presenting this as a cost-effective solution rather than bringing out another expensive solution and driving down the rental rates just to fit it within budget. Just something to think about. Yeah. And let's roll camera, roll sound. Okay. I have my iPad plugged directly into a receiver for the best image quality. When you connect an iPad using USB-C, the transmitter doesn't have quite enough power to charge the tablet, but it will slow the discharge rate significantly. I do wish there were some sort of pass-through charging option so that it's just one less device that I have to charge. And another quick note, when you're using Wi-Fi, you'll top out at around eight megabits for your bit rate, and we'll only have a range of about 200 meters. Now, I'm not anti-Teradek, but I will say that with this system, simple things like pairing a transmitter and receiver together just works. I cannot tell you how many times I've been stuck on location, twiddling my thumbs, trying to pair a new Teradek system together because there's either too much interference in the area or they're just running different firmware versions. I always joke that they're called creative solutions because you have to get creative with your solutions when their products end up shitting the bed. Things like maintaining a solid connection just works. Automatic frequency hopping just works. And being totally transparent, I can't remember the last time I used my Bolt 4K because small things like that are usually what motivate me to choose DJI every time. And that's just because I, again, need something that works. My biggest concern, again, is the non-removable antenna. I take pretty good care of my stuff, but we all know how demanding film sets can be, so I could see this as being an easy, easy point of failure. I would have also loved to have seen some sort of pass-through charging with the USB-C ports. And the latency, again, isn't terrible, but it is there. The low latency mode can help improve performance, but it is still pretty noticeable when you compare it to most other systems. At the end of the day, I've been trimming down most of my kit, and again, I just need something that's reliable for the work that I do, and at this price point, the SDR is pretty hard to beat.